Hi, and welcome to Morning Coffee with Pizan Academy. I'm Deanna, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about the American library system and how we got to where we are today and what libraries have to do in the modern world in order to stay relevant. In order to understand our libraries today and how we got here, we need to go back over a hundred years and talk about the great businessman and industrialist Andrew Carnegie. Now, Andrew Carnegie was once the richest man in the world, but he didn't start out that way. He was a Scottish immigrant, and as a boy living in Allegheny, Pennsylvania, he worked as a bobbin threader. And this was um, a job in a factory where they would hire these young men and sometimes girls to thread the bobbins for the machines for the textile workers. Now, while he was working here, he wanted to go into the library and read some books to better himself and to educate himself. But at this time, libraries were a subscription service. You had to be a member in order to have access to the books. And so he wrote a letter to the head of the library asking for permission to access the library. Now he's a young man at this point and the head of the library wrote back to him denying him access to the library. So he took that letter and had it published in the newspaper and made a case for himself saying that he, along with other tradesmen and their apprentices, should have access to these libraries even though they can't afford afford it. And the membership was $2 a month, and this is way beyond the scope of what Carnegie could afford at this time. The head of the library ultimately gave in because of this publicity that Carnegie was smart enough to put this letter denying him access in the newspaper. And so he got access for himself and these uh, skilled workers as well as their apprentices. And so Carnegie began going to the libraries. Now let's fast forward towards the end of his life where he became a great philanthropist. He gave away millions and millions of dollars of the money that he earned in business and in banking and wanted to give back to the community. And so the way he did this is he built over 1,600 libraries across the nation. He built the infrastructure, the buildings, for the cities and towns to have libraries. Now, the caveat was that they had to supply the books, they had to provide the maintenance, and they had to pay for the staffing. So a lot of these libraries in the modern world, the buildings still exist, but they maybe have become repurposed or have closed down. And in some cases, these buildings are the prettiest buildings that are still in these small towns across America. In 1903, Carnegie donated $300,000 to build a library in downtown Washington, D.C. And one thing that Carnegie stipulated was that the library had to be open to all. So for quite some time, this was the only place that African Americans could use a restroom in downtown Washington, D.C. This library provided a place for everyone to come and be able to get knowledge. And this was one of the main tenets of Carnegie's vision is to have access for anyone, no matter who they were, no matter their income or their race or anything about them, male, female, it didn't matter. He wanted people to be able to better themselves through knowledge. Now this was a new concept throughout America. A lot of cities had libraries, but these were subscription libraries as he had faced when he was a young man. Carnegie set out to change the way that people could access information. Now let's fast forward over a hundred years and we still have modern libraries, we still have public libraries in most of our towns, but because information is so much easier to attain with the internet um, and a lot of different places to access information, libraries have had to adjust to the modern world. In fact, in Iowa, there's a library that lends out cake pans. They notice that uh, cake pans take up a lot of room in a kitchen, and so people don't have all of these different styles of cake pans if they want to bake cakes for their children's parties or weddings or whatever. And so they decided to have a repository where people could borrow cake pans. 
Other libraries offer museum passes for free to their library members. Some libraries will have databases available online, sometimes from home, sometimes you have to physically go to the library to access the database. And this is all depending on the license that the library holds. Um, some libraries want to bring people into their infrastructure, into their buildings, so they will have things available in person that you can do on their computers. You can access computers free across the libraries across the nation. And so they've really continued to stay relevant in the modern world and keep up with the changing times. So whether you live in a small town or a large city, the library probably has stuff that you would like to use, whether you access it from home or you're getting museum passes for your family or you just want to take your kids in and kind of show them some books and stroll around. Um, some libraries still are in these old Carnegie buildings and they're absolutely beautiful architecturally. Some have some really nice exhibits on either local history or they might have some rare books that they show on occasion. And just the architecture itself, um, I was visiting back east and I took, uh, went into a public library and they had a little guide that walked you through and talked to you about some of the artwork on the wall and the building itself because it was like a museum because it was so old and over time people had donated things to the library that were of quite some value. So you never know what you're going to find either at your local library or if you're visiting another town, but these are such fun places to go. And in the winter, it's a perfect opportunity because if it's cold outside, you can go and explore the library and introduce your family to these wonderful gems in our American history. If you're enjoying watching our videos, please like them, subscribe, share with your friends, uh, share on your social media pages. We also have links to our social media in the description below. And next time you're at your library, take a moment and thank Andrew Carnegie for the opportunity that you are experiencing in that moment because it was him that brought these great repositories of information to us today. Have a great one and we'll see you next time.